All right, this is going to be a quick single video demo on digital painting and an introduction to it. It's a new technique using raster imaging. We're going to set up our new frame to print as large as possible. on our printer, so 13 by 19 inches by 350 pixels per inch. When you do digital paintings, you want to have a decent resolution, right? We're always going to keep our background layer as a flat blank white layer. So sometimes I'll rename that paper white. A lot of being smart about digital painting is just setting up your layers in the right way, and then I lock that layer so you don't accidentally paint on it. Then we're going to have our sketch layer. And you could always scan this in, but we're going to just do some digital sketching. Because you don't want to start with details, you want to start with basic shapes, easy sketching. So using basic brushes, I like the pressure sensitive for size brush at not too hard, about 80%, and a fairly large brush, because with pressure sensitivity I can go big and small. I'm just going to give you an intro into drawing faces. right? because one of your options is to do a caricature. So the first thing you do with a face is the basic shapes are generally a circle for the cranium and then a mask-like shape for the mandible. I always design faces in two shapes, you know, whether they're broad, whether they're angular, but it gives you a lot more variety. And then it works better kind of showing them from the side as well in two shapes. Here's the neck, here's the neck, here's the neck, here it is from the side. So you might consider things like that. When you're doing a caricature of someone, the first step is always kind of understanding what they actually look like. So if I take someone like one of my musical heroes, Elvis Costello, you could do a, a painting of anyone for this project. And I look at his images, and I just want to, I could do kind of young Elvis Costello, why not? Actually, let's do his My Aim is True days. I'm just going to keep that reference photo open in preview in the corner so I can kind of look at it whenever I want to. And I'll float this out so I can keep them separate. All right, so if I want to draw him as a caricature, the first thing I need to do is kind of understand the basic shapes. And so this is how I can kind of diagram his face. But this is also rules of all faces. So the first thing is you split it in half that way, and you split it in half from top to bottom. And that, that middle line is actually the eye line. And the eyes space across the face at five equal spaces. So you go a little bit of a distance from either side of the middle, and that's one eye width, and then you carry that width twice over on each side. And that will give you accurate, realistic eye spacing for your caricatures or for your paintings. The nose goes halfway down between the eye line and the bottom of the chin. So this you can call the nose. That's the bottom of the nose. And then the nose is only as wide as one eye width. So that kind of shows you the box that the nose takes place in. Then you split the space from the nose to the bottom of the chin into thirds, lightly. This is just my, my sketch layer. That top layer, this is the space between the, the lips. So this is the mouth separation. And so the upper lip goes up here, the lower lip goes down there, and then this line I call the chin line, that's where the camera is hitting his chin there, but it's the shadow underneath the, uh, the lower lip and where our skin tacks back to the skull. Now how do you figure out how wide the mouth is? Well when the mouth is relaxed, you draw a dotted line, I'll do it a different color just so you can see clearly, from the center of the head and through the corners of your nose rectangle. 
and then that drawn straight through if the face is relaxed shows you the width of the mouth line so Elvis Costello's mouth would look something like this right. now this is just giving you the placement of all the features we go to the top of the head and you can split that into thirds and you have what's called the brow line you can see it on Elvis right there it's where the skin tacks back above each eye and holds the brow muscle and that's the first place you'll start to see a motion in the forehead and then you go to that second third and you'll get a nice average hairline before it's receded too much that's kind of where hair starts to come out of the head now hairlines are very very distinct for everybody but this is a nice average so he has a, a bit of a widow's peak here so it starts low in the middle and then curves back like that ears fit nicely between the eye line and the nose line so if you carry that nose line to the edge that's what contains the ears on average and then the ears grow beyond that as people get older eyebrows obviously fit between the brow ridge and the top of the eye but eyebrows aren't bone so they're completely distinct to everybody so this is kind of my template now notice it doesn't look like Elvis Costello now because it's on just a generic face so now I'm going to do my next sketch layer and what this is going to do this is where I can actually make the jaw more what I want make it a little greener because everyone has a very unique jawline so Elvis Costello's jawline when he was younger was kind of more square and long like this so I sketch that in and then he had really really deep temples that looked like this kind of arced in pretty angular and then of course he has the shape of his hair which in this kind of new wave built up on top of his skull quite a bit looked like that and then of course you have the details of his eyes and the details of his glasses and all that good stuff so using just this simple brush I'm just gonna sketch it in this isn't inked line work this is just getting kind of basic shapes in looking at how his eyes work are they squinty are they open how much of the pupil do you see what are the angles around the eyes what are the the shadows doing and the muscles and again this can be a caricature so you can kind of have some fun and exaggerate with it and just play with your favorite drawing styles so his nose but I, I love using that pressure sensitivity brush and he has these very kind of cupid lips that pretty close to the middle even though the line extends further okay you have big kind of blocky eyebrows but again you want to look at the angles of those and then again the hair so messy big broad so our digital painting is going to start with a basic shape sketch and if you don't feel very confident in your basic shapes it's always good to practice but the other thing you can do and notice my brush is only at an opacity of 72 so that gives me a little bit of an ability to to build it up as I paint and where it overlaps itself it gets darker the other thing you can always do is just to rotoscope your sketch on top of a photo so if I wanted to I could bring this photo in I don't need to worry about it being large reference or not and I can rotate it place it behind my sketch and kind of size it and actually trace it's like tracing on onto a photo and get my basic shapes that way now that's kind of cheating it's not the best way but if you're very very new to kind of drawing faces or animals or whatever you're going to use for your digital painting this might be a good way to get yourself started 
but it is limiting because then you're limited to just one reference. And what I'll usually do is take the opacity down a little bit with the white background behind. So then you can kind of see, okay, that's outlining his face and kind of showing how those proportions work. And the beauty of this face template is it will work for any face. The only thing that changes is the shape of that egg, but the eyes are always five across, the nose is always halfway down, the lips are always a third down from the nose line, so on and so on, if you're going for realism. And then to caricature him, you can always just play with your basic shape layer and warp it. So he's looking down a little bit, so his ears are a little high. So if I wanted to play with that, I could but this is just my straightforward drawing of him. And then of course his glasses, they might even deserve their own layer. Might do them in a different color. Using the same brush. And his early glasses, they were just these big round things. Okay, then you want to kind of understand where his neck is. I can kind of steal these new wave clothes, the sharp lapels. And work from those. Maybe he probably has a skinny tie on with his dotted shirt. Okay, so that's my sketch that might go underneath. Now how does digital painting work? Because you can bring in a sketch, and you can sketch in your sketchbook, scan it, and then paint on top of that. Well, it works very much like what we've been doing, except what I like to do is fill with middle gray before we get started with the actual painting, so that your highlights and your shadows all look the same. I'm going to go ahead and lock all my sketch layers. I can even combine them all into one layer. And then on top of it, I'm going to do like we did for, for digital coloring, kind of my, my local color. The flat color that something is, um, despite anything else. And to do this, you can actually steal it from the photo. So if I go at 100%, I can use my brush, I can hold down Option on my local color layer and I can click it and actually steal the, the highlight skin color in that case. Turn on my gray layer, start painting it in. I'm at 72%, but maybe I want to actually be on a different mode, like a soft light mode, so I can kind of see everything underneath as I'm painting, and then I might convert it later. So let's get his skin in there. I'm not worried about my edges. This is just kind of the, the base quick speed painting. Get his ears, just block it in. I've already kind of done his hair. So what does that look like without the sketch? Something like that, right? And because I'm at 70, 2% opacity, the more I build it up, the more it will kind of show up. All right, what else? If I change that then to normal mode, it will be solid. And eventually I won't need my sketch anymore. But if I do want my sketch, I can always put it over the top. Don't really need that sketch anymore. But this I can put on the top, leave it locked, but just have it kind of floating there and I'm painting behind it so I won't accidentally paint on it. Okay, then I can steal other colors still. Just turn this off. Steal kind of a shadow duotone color and start painting in with that. Above the eyebrows, around the eyes. I can move his glasses up. And that's how we'll start building our digital painting. We'll get into using better brushes and having more control, but you always need to get kind of your base colors down.